In this video, we're going to look at writing one quantity as a percentage of another. Let's start off with some non-calculator examples. In the first question, we're asked to write 14 as a percentage of 25. Let's just remind ourselves what a percentage is. It's out of 100. The way I like to deal with these now is to write them as fractions. We've got 14 out of 25. So we could see this now as a test score. What I want to do is rewrite this fraction as a denominator now of 100. I think to myself, what did I need to do to 25 to make it into 100? And the answer is multiply by 4. I therefore need to multiply the numerator by 4, and that will give me a fraction out of 100. So this is an equivalent fraction. So 4 times by 14 is going to give me 56. We have 56 over 100, which is 56%. It's 56 one hundredths. So all I've done is taken now the denominator, I've multiplied it up. So for example now, a slightly easier one, if I scored 3 out of 10 in a test, what would I need to do now to make the denominator 100? The answer is multiply it by 10, therefore I need to multiply the numerator by 10, that will give me 30 out of 100, which is going to be 30%. So these are non-calculated examples. In the next question, we're asked to write 7 out of 50, or 7 fiftieths, as a percentage. So what I want to do here is write this as something over 100. Clearly, all we need to do to get 50 up to 100 is multiply by 2. Sometimes students say add 50. When we're talking about fractions, we can multiply or divide the numerator and denominator by the same value and it won't change. So it's not a case of adding, we're simply going to scale this up. So we could write now as an equivalent fraction, 7 over 50 is the same as 14 over 100. 14 over 100 is going to give us now 14%. So 14% is what 7 out of 50 is as a percentage. Okay, John scored 8 out of 20 in a test. Find the percentage he scored. So we've got 8 out of 20. This is what it looked like in our books. What do I need to do now to get a denominator of 100? The answer is multiply the 20 by 5. So I need to multiply the 8 by 5. That's going to give me 40 out of 100, which is 40%. So we've now found one quantity as a percentage of another. We've looked at 8 as a percentage of 20. We're told Fred scored 6 out of 40 in a test and we're asked to find Fred's percentage. Now this one is slightly more challenging. We could multiply this up, multiplying by 2.5, or I could use equivalent fractions. We know that 40 doesn't go into 100 without a remainder. So what we could do is simply write this as 3 over 20. That is an equivalent fraction. So I've just half the numerator from 6 to 3, half the denominator. If I now multiply this up by 5, I'm going to have my denominator of 100, and I'm going to have my numerator of 15. 15 over 100 is going to give us now 15%. So all I've done is written an equivalent fraction. So these are typical examples of non-calculator questions. All we do is simply now try and rewrite the fractions and then turn them into percentages. Okay, let's move on. What we're now going to look at is calculator type questions. So we're asked to write 32.7 as a percentage of 49.7. All I'm going to do is write this as a test score. 32.7 divided by 49.7, then I'm going to multiply it by 100. This is going to give me the decimal, multiplying by 100 is going to give me the percentage. So all I've done is written it as my test score, and I'm going to multiply my answer by 100. So if we go ahead and do this, we can look at that, we can write in that this is 32.7, and we're going to divide this by 49.7, and multiply our answer. So if we just look at that now, that gives us 0 0.6579 and so on and so forth. Multiplying by 100, we end up now 
with 65.8% correct to one decimal place. So I'm going to write that this is 65.8% and that's given to one DP. Every time I do a question like this where we have expressed in now one quantity as a percentage of another, I simply like to write them as test scores. So if we were looking now at 1.87 as a percentage of 13.62, I would write 1.87 of now the 13.62, so divided by the 13.62, and then we're going to multiply by 100. So straight for a calculator with that, if you wanted, you could write it as 1.87, and then we're going to divide this now by the 13.62, that's going to give me now on a 0 0.137 and so on and so forth. Multiplying it by 100 will give us that now at 13.7. So 13.7% and that again is correct to one decimal place. Okay, let's have a go at another one. Helen scored 13 out of 29 in her test. Write a score as a percentage. So 13 out of 29. I can see that I'm not going to be able to now uh, scale this up to 100. We've got 29, which isn't going to be a factor. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and multiply now by 100. So straight through the calculator, 13 of now uh, 29 marks were scored. So 13 out of 29, and we're just going to multiply that up now to get our answer. So that's going to give me 44.827 and so on and so forth. So I say 44.8% and that is correct to 1 dp. So that's all we need to do. So we're just looking now at one quantity as a percentage of another. If it's non-calculator, rewrite it as a fraction and look to now get a denominator of 100. Whatever you do to the denominator, you must do to the numerator, that's either multiplying or dividing. That will give us now some fraction over 100. Out of 100 means percentage, so we can rewrite it. If it's calculator, rewrite it as a fraction and multiply up by 100%. Again, that's one way that you could look at it. I like it this way around, but there are alternatives.